Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good night. Whatever time it is when you're watching this, um, it is currently, it's 11 o'clock on the dot this morning for me. Now before I get into this video, I wanna say a massive thank you for everyone that's got involved and everyone that left comments on Van Life Is Dead, my video uh, with the off-grid house. That's a dream goal for me, being there kind of opened my eyes up to what I wanna uh, achieve possibly in the future. I don't think it'll be the early future but at least it's something to put my mind on and I don't know if you've noticed I've put out a lot more content recently. I've kept up to date on my Instagram, on the little shorts, on YouTube itself as well as posting links in groups which is something I've never done and I've never really wanted to. But the last month I've realised I've really got to start seeing YouTube as kind of a job I've always taken it as a bit of a laugh taking it for granted I've never taken it seriously and last month showed me that I really need to to put things in place so that I can live a little bit more comfortably and then being at my friend's property man it sets it sets seeds it really does it really gives me some sort of drive in life to go and do something a bit different to go and work that little bit harder so that is I think that's the route I'm going to go. I'm going to see YouTube as a full-time job now and try and be try and be as good as it as I can be. I've always let it fall behind. I've always looked at the comments. I didn't always reply to the comments. Um, one week you will see three videos, then you won't see anything for two or three weeks. And it's not consistent. It's not the way it should be. I live a very, very easy life. And I could make it a little bit more easy by putting some more work in. And that logic probably doesn't make sense to a lot of people, but... This video will maybe explain why. So I asked on which topic would my audience like to see next and uh, I put a few suggestions down there of things that I would like to film but haven't really got round to, haven't put my finger on my backside um, so I thought I'd see which one that people would like first. Quitting smoking update where I would uh, tell you how my story went and I think it went all right so this will be covered but I didn't know if to do this one first I stopped alcohol for around a month um, I will go into details about that and for me that was a lot harder than the quitting smoking but I will be doing a, a video on that at some point and if these videos aren't to your taste you can stop the video you can quit the video or you can go to the next video uh, a couple of people asked for a van tour a tour of my little home I will be doing that it's just I need to um, I need to get the Instagram cleaners in before I can do any filming in here. To be honest, it's not too bad, it's just dusty and there's paint everywhere. And finally, because this question has been asked so many times recently, how do I financially support myself? It's kind of a topic that I've always shied away from and I've always deemed it as no one else's business until I read a comment yesterday. And that comment's here. It's from, uh, the YouTube name was Twinkliest. 
Twinkly list. Twink twinkly list. Twinkly list. Twinkle list. Uh, I can't pronounce this properly. I really struggle with this. And I do play and make a joke about how I read things. Uh, even the other day I put off off grill or off grill of grid, I put the R and the I the wrong way round and I do have some lovely supporters actually they will say hey Martin just to let you know you spelt it wrong and I was like oh dude because even though I might be able to spell a word sometimes I get the words mixed up the letters in the wrong place and I ain't ashamed of that I'm not ashamed of that at all it's just a struggle that I've always always had I get corrected on it I really don't mind because how am I meant to learn how am I meant to see the errors because things always look normal to me even if they're uh, muddled up but this comment, I'm going to read it out, and I was so impressed with this comment, I actually posted it on my Instagram story, and I also put it on my personal Facebook, which I normally keep YouTube away from my personal Facebook. It never had a time or place on there until now, because I want to see it as, as a job. I really need to start taking it seriously. This comment goes as followed. I would like to know more about Portugal and your perspective. When you go for drives and talks, I like that, but it'd be nice to see more scenery too. The wildlife, sunsets, sunrises. I really admire how you survive, especially on such little funds. This is the bit that actually got me because although my funds are little or near enough non-existent, but I see it as normal. I see the struggles as normal. I see it as just as normal for me as it is for you. Um, I forget that people have a full-time job or that people have that salary coming in. I, I really do forget that. I don't think you fully understand how inspiring you are. I never really see myself as inspiring, I seen that maybe I can open a door for people or show them what they're capable of doing. Maybe I am inspiring because the comment goes on to say, you've lived a life more than most have in a lifetime. I actually forget about that until I go back and I look at videos from the past or reminders come up on my, my Facebook or Instagram. I forget the things I've done and maybe I haven't appreciated them quite as much as what I should do. Um, but I have been reflecting on times that that, I, uh, that I've had and people that I've spent glorious moments with and silly situations that I've put the van in. So following that comment, let's talk about how I don't afford to live the life that I live. Before we go any further, I just need to clarify that this video isn't a pity me video. Um, I, I never need to pity me. This is not for you to put your hand into your wallet um, although people do, people do do that. Every so often, people are kind and they want to see see you enjoy yourself a little bit more. Even my Patreons, I did a video on there um, a month ago, knowing that people were hard up for Christmas because the year, or the, the last two years that have passed, have not been great for people. People have struggled, um, and I actually put a, a post on there or a wee video on there, just to explain that if the one dollar, two dollars, three dollars, four dollars or whatever the conversion would be, a month would be better off in their pocket for a rainy day. I encourage them to do that. As much as it's nice for me to have the support, people have to look after themselves first. A couple of years ago, I walked out of some employment that I had. I wasn't impressed with the way that I was being treated. I wasn't impressed with the way that other staff members were being treated. I promised myself that I would never, I'd never fall victim to that again. I was doing whatever I could just to have the wage in the bank and then I was spending money on living a lifestyle that I couldn't really afford even though I was on a half decent wage or salary. For the first couple of years of me living in a van and just travelling around, I, I still worked. I still worked a full time job, sometimes 90, sometimes 100 hours a week. I worked for the University of Chester on their security team. Now some weeks I would be pulling over a hundred hours um, I was working on a, a roster system of kind of four days on and four days off or should I say four nights on four nights off um, some nights were 16 hours long sometimes 18 of other staff members failed to turn up on time and my responsibilities started getting more and more and more and more my four days on and my four days off turned into maybe six or seven days on and one or two days off because other staff members just they couldn't do the hours they couldn't pull in the hours and I was absolutely loving it because it didn't matter what I wanted, I could pretty much go out and get it within reason. And I don't mean I could go and spend thousands of pounds on, on pointless stuff, but having a McDonald's every day 
on the way to work was not a problem. Having a costa from the petrol station every time I put fuel in wasn't a problem. Because I was working all these extra hours, I had all these wonderful things. I had professional grade cameras. Um, I mean, God, I'm filming with one. This is my spare one. You can see how battered they are, but they're compact. They're, they're easy to use. If I break this or lose this, what have I lost? This is, I think this was 60 euros. Um, the one I'm using here is probably 500 euros. And it's expensive, but I was used to having um, professional grade cameras. We're talking bodies that were worth fifteen hundred pounds, second hand, without lenses. Um, any of the lenses could have been anywhere from seven hundred pound upwards, and that's what I used to blow my money on. When I moved into a van, there was more money for me to waste. They got out of hand, but then I started enjoying the travelling round. I started enjoying seeing places, so I started buying less for myself, saying no to the overtime, and just travelling the UK, Scotland, Wales and just having a damn good time. Then I got my first taste of traveling Europe. I got my first taste of being in a different country as a van lifer, not having a clue what to do. Like never done anything like this in my past. Didn't know how to approach it. Didn't know if I would run out of money, it's fear of breaking down. And I just thought, I'll just do it. It's something I want to do. Worst case scenario, I fly home, the van gets left somewhere. Slowly but surely, the moving round and having treats and paying for fuel slowly ate into the little bit of money that I'd saved from the previous year or two, which wasn't a great deal. But when you're putting in fuel every other day, every two days, every three days, at over £100 per tank full, then yeah, that money soon depletes. And then you, when you have breakdowns and gearbox problems, like it's thousands of pounds taken away from your budget. And when you need MOT work and it's six, seven hundred pounds to get the vehicle through the MOT, and it's worth you doing that because you've put all that effort and hard work into that vehicle, then the money slowly but surely runs out. And it probably ran out for me about three years ago. I completely ran out. And for the past three years, I've lived for free, essentially, and. I'm not a scrounger, I'm not a beggar, I'm not an e-beggar, I do put my worth, um, I try and anything that is given or I receive or I'm rewarded, I try and reciprocate that, I try and put it, I try and give something back for that. So I started travelling the UK to try and earn some fuel money and help people out and keep myself going. And sometimes it worked out really well and sometimes it didn't. Sometimes people would give me fantastic park ups at their farms and literally I would just be helping them out for a day or two. Or some of the beautiful people that work at a garage um, in the south of Wales, I used to go there for my MOT work or if any suspension work needed doing on the van, any welding. And they would accommodate me straight away. They would allow me to use their workshop overnight. They would give me a hook up cable so I could use all the facilities all night long and um, when it comes to my MOT they never ever charged me they always gifted it to me they took it out of the company profits um, even when I needed uh, it was oh, I can't remember what it was I think it was a wishbone I think it was a wishbone that was ordered and they just put it on their accounts and counted it um, as a gift towards me and the main reason for that is because while I was there and I'm sat in the van I'm walking around the place and I'm tidying up I mean the boys they're not scruffy, but it's a garage. Like Things get messy, rags get blown about, there's empty containers in places. So I just started tidying up. Because of helping out, I got these rewards, and it went further to that, that I returned back to the garage to go and paint the workshop, and they did a bunch of modifications for me that I wanted, some welding. And I had my four tyres. My four tyres, my off-roading tyres that were on the battle bus, they were technically free, because I just turned up, and I gave them a hand. I was um, taking stickers off the trailers and I helped them fit a window into the workshop. Because of doing that, then I had the tyres. So that worked out. The bloke called Danny, he wanted a roof or he wanted a hand putting a roof onto his house. And I got no experience doing that. And I said, dude, if I can eat with you guys and you treat me and I can have the Wi-Fi and a warm shower, I'll gladly come down um, for somewhere to park for a couple of days and I'll give you a hand. And he bit my hand off and I went to go and help out with this work. I made new friends. While I was there, I managed to drop the fuel tank and sort out some wiring. I had a dashboard fire so I could rewire that while I was there. We got 
um, the emergency light from the tank so at least I could tell if I had fuel and I don't give a price for people that I help out I never have done I help out because I want to help out I'm not the best at doing these things I help out because I really want to help people um, Craig your van I come down and I ripped out all the light in I put new light in I sorted out all the, the wiring that the person before they just it was just a bird's nest it just wasn't wasn't safe it wasn't pleasant to look at and I just improved it that's all I did improved it but that got me a reward and that helped me out that got me fed that got me fish and chips and curry sometimes when I say rewarded it doesn't have to be financial it could be a gift that someone's given me it could be that they've uh, fed me it could be that they've bought me some beer or they've said how much was your last tank of fuel here you go I'll pay for the fuel and about two years ago it got me thinking that could I travel and carry on doing this and I've been fortunate enough that I have shared my van with other people and that means that sometimes fuel costs were completely covered for some of these adventures and trips and knowing my financial position and people still wanting to do the travel always worked out I've always done woofing I've always done work away type stuff I've always helped out people so you would have seen that in the past when you've seen that I've gone to help people install their diesel heaters or I've stayed in a location for a couple of months or over a year to help out with businesses um, in the return of somewhere for working and that's kind of work away sometimes you do get reward for it sometimes there is paid positions but it's not always um, I was fortunate enough on the campsite that my position was paid it wasn't the best pay but it was paid I don't want to go into details but so it was it was worthwhile and the people at the campsite that were wonderful they agreed to borrow me the money for this fantastic home that I have now this fantastic home with all its problems but they actually funded the van and I've paid nearly half back I've got half back to pay and this is why I really want to just get the YouTube up and going and smash it out and to pay back the other half of this vehicle would be absolutely lovely so in terms of little things that I do to save money and I really mean to save money my YouTube does not do very well I think in the past 12 months I think it's made 1200 pound um, that's in 12 months that's that's not a lot at the minute I'm averaging on YouTube about 90 pound a month um, that will increase I hope over the next couple of weeks especially with me putting more effort and love into the channel and then there's a handful of patrons and I don't promise the patrons anything sometimes they get content a little bit earlier sometimes they get a sneaky cheeky video but I don't have any tears on there and it's about 20 pound a month from that as well and that goes a long way it goes a long way I try now my food bill is down to I think I've got it down to about 23 euros a week um, this is on average because some weeks are going to be higher than others and little things that I've done to try and do that is so I stopped smoking that is saving me around 10 euros a week I've stopped drinking so the drinking is probably it's probably again another 10 euros a week so straight away I'm up to what I spend now just with tobacco and alcohol and I'm not technically in the position to spend money on alcohol or tobacco so it had to go it had to go little things at the minute is uh, when I'm boiling the kettle it, it sounds so stupid but I don't let it get to boil I only put as much water in the kettle so it can boil as quick as it can or at least get hot as quick as it can and use minimal gas everything is a thought process everything that I do if I eat something out of the fridge I always think okay I've got this many of this left if I have one now I've only got this many until I go back shopping so I think about things. When I go shopping, I walk around the shops, and when I pick up coffee and it's one euro forty nine, one forty nine, add, oh, I'll get a baguette, forty cents, add, and I add up all my shopping when I walk around the shops, and I've been doing that now uh, for maybe, maybe three or four weeks, and it's really helping because when you put something on there, not thinking, oh, can of monster, one forty nine for one can of monster, no, I'll put it back. I don't want that. And that's been a massive game changer. It's really made me see that um, how little I can have, how little I do need to live. This video is completely in the wrong order because when I said about helping out people, I was meant to uh, mention Missy, Dom and Rosie here at the Wildlands. Now, without these kind people being like they are 
and allowing me to basically live on their land. This is their paradise. This is this is this is I'm just a guest here. This is their paradise. They're allowing me to live here. I do get treats. I do get rewarded. Um, if something needs doing, the dom needs a hand with, I'll try and help out where I can. Sometimes I don't always pull my weight completely, but I make up for it in other ways. And other ways might just be the fact that I'm going into town and I will see if anything needs picking up. It could be that they go away for the weekend or go and stay at the air. And I'll stay here and I'll look after the place. And it's quite kind of reciprocal and it's nice because it gives... They have the reassurance that someone else is going to be here, possibly if they're not. I get my garden looked after if they're not here. This is another thing, and I will film the video. They've given me a piece of land to use to grow vegetables, and I cannot tell you, I cannot tell you how happy that makes me. That food bill in the summer could be even lower, and that'll be amazing. And then I will pay for a few treats, and I will buy a few beers. I just kind of make do. I just kind of make do with everything cameras that are broken I may do I hunt around the bins or at least not so much in this area uh, but mainly in the UK and I did it when I was in the Argyle for a little while I would go to the dumpsters I'd go to the bins and I would go with the bread and baguettes and any pastries that were chucked out from the bakeries that day i will take them back to the campsite with me and I never ever seen a problem with that I got no problem jumping in bins for a meal in fact the other day I chucked out an apple because I bit into it and it was all brown on the inside and I went back half an hour later and I picked it out and washed it and I just cut the good bits off because I don't want to be throwing them stuff away I don't want to throw anything away I want to if, if if when I'm growing food and I have X amount of X vegetable then that is what I'm going to be eating and I think it's a very very difficult way to try and live but I don't have that income I don't have that support I've never claimed benefits from the state and every so often from time to time there's some there's been some very generous people when they've seen that I've needed something or that I've gone without something they've actually sent me a message to say check PayPal sometimes I'm absolutely astonished with the generosity of these people there's been times where I've actually sent the money back or offered to send the money back or I've made sure that person is in a complete position that they can and I forget sometimes that there's a lot of people out there that would like to share the wealth and for them to help someone purchase a new phone or for them to help someone get a Wi-Fi box to go online for their entertainment and they're in a position to do so where it doesn't affect them I don't see the problem with that and I used to I used to see a big big problem with it and I don't ask for help I don't ask for help sometimes maybe I should ask for help but I see it that I put myself in this position is for me to live with I chose this I chose not to go to work I chose to skimp and scrape on everything just to make ends meet. I chose that and it's no one else's responsibility to make sure that I put food in my belly. It's for me to go out and do something about it. When something isn't right, do something about it. And I've never asked for money from anybody. Sometimes I encourage people to go over, maybe buy a t-shirt or a sticker because it's my way of giving a little something back. And I get a reward for that as well. So like, if you go over to Teespring, click the link below and go and get one of my stickers. I think this could be like, I think it's three or four dollars that I get from that, so like three pounds something. I see it as expensive, I see it as you're paying the post as well, so that's like seven pound for me only to get three of that. And it's, it's sad because if I was in the UK, I would just get stickers printed out and I'd just give them to people, man. I'd just give them to people just to get my name out there because I don't want to exploit people. I want my money to be from the revenue and from advertisers. I want them to pay me to do this as a job. And the only thing that you guys need to do is support me and put up with the adverts in the video. That's all I really, really want. Now I'm going to get to the subject of GoFundMe. Now, I have never been one to do or think or even try a GoFundMe. It's never been my style. And I know people that have done really well off it. And they've, they've managed to really set down roots or buy really really nice stuff rather than just make and do if you never really sat comfortably with me and I was really depressed last year I contemplated everything about life but because my head wasn't working properly my whole enthusiasm to do anything productive to do anything online to do anything with the YouTube channel I lost it I, I just could not be bothered the negativity and then I was making myself negative and my videos were boring and it was just about the van leaking and just depressing so I stopped and the result with that is I had I think I had five months of earning less than 50 pound for each of them months
So I had five months of pretty much earning less than £50 from YouTube for the month. And I expressed my concern to some friends of mine, Martin and Debs from Way Away. Um, you should head over to their channel as well, go and give them a follow. Tell them I said hi, go and write them a comment. Debbie took it upon herself, and she knows how much I'm against this. Debbie, I'm still against it, but it was it was cool that it happened, because it really, really, really did save my bacon, it really saved me. But Debbie took it upon herself to organise a little GoFundMe just to earn me a little bit of money just so I could get rolling so the van could be licensed so the van could be MOT'd so I could pay for the tyres on the van just so I can get myself up on my feet and start moving around again and this happened like with everyone's support she got me back rolling it got me licensed it got me insured it got the vehicle through its examination paid for the vehicle duty out here in Portugal and it gave me a couple of weeks of being comfortable um, most of the money went on the materials for the roof. It wasn't quite enough for the stuff that I bought and the money that I'd wasted doing other repairs. So I had to just make do a little bit. This is why when the roof got fixed, it got fixed. When it got fixed, it didn't get fixed any time beforehand because the money just wasn't there. I had to wait until the effort was put in more into YouTube. Now that I was moving, now that I was feeling like making the vlogs, so the money slowly increased again. Which then means that I was in a position to just move around just a little bit more again and go and experience some other workaways. Like I said, some of these positions, they will feed you. Sometimes there is rewards, sometimes there's payments. So essentially it's free living as long as you, you can get there. And you know what, If even if you didn't have a vehicle, if you can get there, a lot of these places have accommodation as well. And they can put you up for as, pretty much as long as you agree to be there. And apart from getting there, you shouldn't really have a case of spending much money at all. If you wanted to eat at restaurants and drink at bars all the time, then that cost is going to go up. But pretty much it's a free way of living. And I've met people out here that have even less than what I do, earn less than what I do and they're still having a fantastic time enjoying life. So it actually leads me on to say that I don't really buy anything unless it's absolutely necessary. Even food, I cut out all the stuff that I would normally like to have in the fridge or the junky stuff and um, yeah, I just go without anymore. I just don't, I don't feel that I need it in my life and the money that I put towards that can be put towards something else. I cut my own hair. My hair is it's, it's not the best, it's not the neatest, it's not the straightest, but it saves me some money. And I could ask someone else to do it, but I'm not really one to depend on other people. Never really have been. Sometimes it might seem like that, sometimes I do like the support network around me, but I just make things do. I just manage. Things go wrong with the van, I just have to make do. If my engine blows tomorrow, I will just come up with something. There's always something. Don't ask me how, I couldn't tell you. I can't tell you what my plan would be. But if it was a thousand euros worth of work that this van needed tomorrow, somehow I'd make it happen. I, I always, always have done. I don't know how I'll make it happen. And at the end of this month, I can give a little bit more information about my finances because something, something changes at the end of this month, which won't put me in a better position, but it, it will release a lot more stress and pressure that I have around my current financial situation. I don't see myself in a financial disposition I don't see myself as struggling financially and frugal with everything everything I'm frugal I think about everything I do every time I start the engine even if it's to charge power I have to justify is it worthwhile my night heater I don't always have it on sometimes it's cold but I'm warm enough not to have it on I'd like it to be on I'd like to be more comfy but it's gonna save that extra bit of money. And I do still buy treats, I still buy artwork, I still have my coffee, I can still buy a beer if I want to. It's just that it all has to be justified. So I think with my YouTube and Patreon together, it's about 120, 130 pound a month, which a lot of people don't think is doable. And that's comfortable for me, but 70 pound of that straight away is not mine. That goes to, that goes to the banks, that pays for debts that I've had in the past, which I would be really happy, literally in a handful of days, I come to the end of my agreement with the banks, which means I have no personal debt. No personal debt. The only money that I will owe is the money left for this vehicle, which I'll be making contributions to as soon as I can when I have the extra 20 euros every week. At the end of the month, if there's 50 euros spare, then that's going to go towards this van. And once this van's paid for, then I'm free. And people want to know why didn't I pay for the roof to be done properly? Man, it's expensive. 
it's expensive. Why didn't I pay for gas? I bought another little gas cylinder the other day. Why? Because that was three euros and I was at the shop. Rather than trying to get a regulator and trying to get the right gas bottle, like I can do all this, but it's 40 euros to start a contract. It's the same as Calagas, you need to sign the paperwork to get the bottle. And I don't want to spend that just yet. I would rather light twigs and cook on the fire and just use the camping stove just for cups of coffee. I don't see the need of replacing the gas at the minute. If I want a warm shower, heat up the water on the log burner and bring it in and just have a flannel wash. I've started saying yes a bit more when people invite me round for a meal. I say yes now because I want to be invited round. I want to live as cheaply and as freely as possible. And the weird thing is, I don't see this as anything special. I, In my head, I see it as normal. When it comes to the end of the month and I know there's only £15 left and a bunch of coins, I really think about what I spend that on and I always think about how much revenue is going to be for the next month and this is why at the end of January I smashed out a vlog every single day because the CPM for YouTube was so low I had no choice just to smash out the content but by doing that it actually gave me my mojo back so I hope that gives you a little bit of an understanding of how how I don't afford to live my life and I do believe that most of the time my life is free I don't pay for anything really, not unless I absolutely have to. I just make do. Even, oh man, I got new pillows. I got new pillows, look, from Mickey. New pillows and a new rucksack, because he didn't use it anymore. He gave me a load of insulation, which is in the front. I just make do with stuff that people give to me. This camping stove was given to me, like, I just make do. I don't replace things. My phone I replaced because I had no choice. My old phone, as soon as you unplugged it, it was off. But headphones, I needed headphones so I could work. Um, and it was either buy big ear muffs or buy headphones. These were like 12 euros. And I bought them a year ago to do building work. And that's cool because it's fine. I don't need anything better. My camera, the one that I'm using now, yeah, the screen doesn't work. The viewfinder doesn't work. But I make do. This is why sometimes some of my videos are out of focus because I can't see what the camera's doing. My laptop, this is eight or nine years old now. And it's heavy. It's heavy on power. It's not very quick anymore. But I just make it do. I haven't gone into too much detail. And I've probably gone off topic a few times. But hopefully you enjoyed this. If there's any questions that I can answer in the future or if I can type it in the comments, just put them down below and I'll see if I can do that. But I hope you've enjoyed this little insight of how I live basically for free. I hope this video has explained how I essentially live for free. And like I said, it's not a pity me video. I chose this. I chose this. And for me, this is normal. I see this as completely normal. I see the struggles every week as normal. And it's not until I read people's comments that I realise that This must be kind of weird for a lot of people to understand. Peace out.